Good morning. The first topic that I'm going to discuss today is the sign test for two independent samples. It is also known as the median test for two sample case. So what is a sign test for two independent samples? This test is known as the median test, another test under non-parametric statistics. It is used to compare the median of two independent samples. This is a counterpart of the t-test under parametric test. So the data consists of two independent samples, n1 and n2 observations. The medians of the two samples are taken jointly. In each sample observation, the values above the medians are assigned the plus sign and those at or below the negative sign. Then the number of the, the plus and the minus signs for each sample is obtained. A chi-square test is used to determine whether the frequencies of the plus and minus signs differ significantly. So this is the formula that we are going to use. This one is the chi-square test. This n is the grand total. For our a and c, these are the observed frequencies. Our b and d, these are our minus frequencies. And then for the kl, this is the row total, and MN, this is, or these are the column total. So for our example problem, consider the test scores of 12 female and 9 male students in a spelling test. This is our data. So for the problem statement, is there a significant difference in the performance of the two groups? For our hypothesis, for our null, there is no significant difference in the performance of the two groups. For our HA or H1 or the alternate hypothesis, there is a significant difference in the performance of the two groups. For our level of significance, we are going to test this at alpha is equal to 0 0.05. For the degrees of freedom, this one, since we are going to create a 2 by 2 table, so our column is equal to 2, our rows is equal to 2, then that is column minus 1 times row minus 1. This is 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, we have 1. And chi-square, a 0 0.05 with 1 degree of freedom is equal to 3.841. This is our tabular value. For our computations, the median of the female and male observations is 16. So assigning a plus to values above 16, that's our median, and a minus to the values at or below it. So we have the following results. Okay, so this data may be tabulated in the form of a 2 by 2 table. Okay, so this explains our degrees of freedom. So we have there... For the female, how many plus signs do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have there 7. This will be our A. Then for the minus signs, we have there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so this is our B. For the male, we have 1, 2, 3. 3 plus signs. This is our C. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 minus signs, this will be our D. Okay. 
So for the row total, for the female, we have there 12. And for the male, we have 9. So 12 plus 9, that is 21. For the column total of plus signs, we have there 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. And 5 plus 6 is equal to 11. 10 plus 11 is also 21. Okay? So this is our N. This is our K, L. This is our MN. Okay? Then, this is the formula that we are going to use. Okay, substitute the values. We have there chi square is equal to 21, that's our N. Then AD is equal to 42 minus BC, that's equal to 15, squared divided by 12, that's K, 9, that's our L, 10, our m and 11 our n so this gives us chi square is equal to 1.288 this is now our computed value okay so for the decision rule if the chi, chi square computed value is greater than the chi-square tabular value, disconfirm the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis. For our conclusion, since the chi-square computed value of 1.288 is less than the chi-square tabular value of 3.841 at 0 0.05 level of significance with 1 degree of freedom, the null hypothesis of no significant difference in the performance of the two groups is confirmed. Or we can say that we fail to reject our null hypothesis. For our next topic, that is the sign test for two correlated samples, also known as the Fisher sign test. So what is the sign test for two correlated samples? This test is under the non-parametric statistics. It is the counterpart of the t-test for correlated sample under the parametric test. The Fisher sign test compares two correlated samples and is applicable to data composed of n paired observations. The difference between each pair of observations is obtained. This test is based on the idea that half of the difference between the paired observations will be positive and the other half will be negative. So the formula that we are going to use here is Z, this is our Fisher sign test, is equal to the absolute value of the difference, D is the difference between the plus and minus signs, Minus 1 divided by the square root of n. n is the number of plus and minus signs. For our example, consider the pretest and the post-test results before and after implementation of a program. So this is our data. So for our problem statement, is there a significant difference between the pretest and post-test results of the 10 students? For our hypothesis, the null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in the pretest or between the pretest and post-test results of the 10 students. For our HA or H1 or the alternate or alternative hypothesis, there is a significant difference between the pretest and post-test results of the 10 students for the level of significance we are going to test this at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 so for our z at 0 0.05 gives us 1.96 this now is our tabular value for our computation we just need to determine if the difference between the pretest and post-test is positive or negative. So we have here for 15 and 19, it gives us negative. Then 19 and 30, negative. 
31 and 26 positive, 36 and 8 we have positive, there is no difference between 10 and 10, and then 11 and 6 we have positive, 19 and 17 we have positive, then 15 and 13 we have positive, 10 and 22 negative, and 16 and 8 positive. So all in all, how many positive or plus signs do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we have 6 plus signs. And for the negative or minus, we have there 1, 2, 3. 3 minus signs. Our N, we have there 9. Okay. So in this example, there are all 6 plus signs. 3 minus signs and 1 zero. 0 is, of course, disregarded. It may be shown that z is equal to the absolute value of z minus 1 over square root of n. We have there the difference between 6 and 3 minus 1 divided by the square root of 9. We have there 2 over 3. It gives us z is equal to 0 0.67 and this is our computed value. Okay. So for the decision rule, if the Z computed value is greater than the Z tabular value, disconfirm the null hypothesis or again, reject the null hypothesis. So for our conclusion, since the Z computed value of 0 0.67 is less than the Z tabular value of 1.96 at 0 0.05 level of significance, the null hypothesis is confirmed, which means that there is no significant difference between the pre-test and the post-test results of 10 students. Or we can say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so thank you for listening. Have a good day.